Atomic Heart is Atomic Heart. It's not Bioshock making a baby with iRobot, it's not Wolfenstein going on a date with Portal, and it's not Prey tickling the anus of Half-Life. Tickling my anus? She's just Why do you come for her? Why did you say that? I'm not too sure where this obsession with likening games to every other game came from, but it's not only discrediting the quality of work the first time developers munfished poured into creating Atomic Heart, but it's also discouraging developers to push the boat out, create new IPs. I mean, why bother? when the highest praise you'll ever receive is being labelled a slightly different coloured reinvention of the wheel. Atomic Heart deserves its own place in the hierarchy within the gaming industry as far as I'm concerned, and that's regardless of any inspiration that was found from games that they themselves were inspired by the many different forms of media that came before them. Bioshock was inspired by the 1994 Coen Brothers film The Hoodsucker. So what? Bioshock is Bioshock, and Atomic Heart is Atomic Heart. Now, I think the visuals, the the art style, the themes, and the robot designs within Atomic Heart are all innovative in their own way. There's an unsettling vibrancy and aura of overwhelmingly contemplative citizens, blissfully unaware of the impending dangers while surrounded by the Soviet Union's iconography. The blank-faced, mono-emotion robot designs create an even bigger sense of division between human and mechanical life forms, while the latter does everything to persuade the former that they belong. But for me, the looting mechanics are the closest thing to a genuine innovation. It's so simple, but inexplicably satisfying. And for those that need a gaming comparison to understand, think of looting as power wash simulator. You see, things can get really weird with comparisons if we're not careful. Simply holding down the right bumper and sweeping your cursor over every lootable container in the room will see clusters of random bits and bobs vacuumed straight into your inventory to later use when crafting or upgrading your weapons as well as upgrading your character's skills. Like I said, such a simple feature but with so much looting to do it's a refreshing way to get the job done while satisfying any OCD tendencies you might have in the process. Atomic Heart isn't exactly rife with totally original innovations, but there was one other that's worth mentioning. I mean, how many other games can claim to have a sex-crazed vending machine that rapes the player? Rebellious dominant men really turn me on. Oh, I'll turn you on, all right. When it comes to the writing on the whole, I think it became pretty clear after meeting Nora, the perverted sex pest vending machine slash fridge, that the narrative shouldn't be taken too seriously. Like, at all. I was a little shocked to be honest, and while I'm fine with comedic angles being organically found within any narrative and I definitely found Nora to be pretty hilarious, there were other moments of intended humour that didn't quite land. The playable protagonist, for example, known as Major Netchaev, codenamed P3, he's constantly cracking wise remarks and sarcastically cursing at anything that dares to open a dialect with him. You dickhead. He's pretty cringe at times and I've seen this character a thousand times before and this attempt at witty rap art doesn't quite land for me, and certainly not in such a contrasting and calculated aesthetic. P3 is in the employ of Professor Sechenov, a member of Soviet Union scientific geniuses whose groundbreaking technological advancements have propelled the USSR to becoming the dominant nation in the world. As these mechanical creations predictably turn from robotic to problematic, it's up to P3 to investigate and solve the mystery behind these rogue androids. Basically, the game contains a lot of serious political affairs and dips its toe into real-world events, so for comedy to be such a prominent intention was a little surprising, and that's not entirely a criticism either, because what's even more surprising is some of the comedy actually works, bar the odd cringy one-liner here and there. Judging a book by its cover is my fault though, and while thematically at times I felt a comical mood that I wasn't expecting, but there was plenty of what I was expecting delivered as expected. There's a good dollop of fast-paced action, and there's a healthy side dish of horror thrown in there as well, gingerly walking the impressively lit and uninviting corridors while wondering which pile of disfigured scrap metal was going to spring to life and start sprinting at me next. The robot designs will be creepier to some than to others, depending on the severity of your automatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomatomat
familiar parts of the game, each one felt differently scripted from the last and for that particular moment too, rather than dropping me into a new area and aimlessly throwing a handful of enemies at me to have at in predictable locations. The combat offers 12 types of weapons to choose from and plenty of upgrades to find. I was initially concerned that the melee combat would feel clunky after watching a few of the trailers, but in truth it's been more than okay. Not amazing mind you, but certainly not bad. The visual feedback is cool, seeing huge chunks of metal being ripped off or a big metallic axe wound being the new prominent facial feature for your newly found robotic adversary. I was fighting the camera movements more than the robots at times though. The speed in which these guys sprint at you or lunge with some terrifying metallic dropkick often saw them flying off the screen and me doing my best to put them back slap bang in the middle of my monitor to give myself a fighting chance got a little tedious after a while. A little FOV slider might do the trick to fix this. From a firearm perspective, there's a little oomph missing from a lot of them, unfortunately. A lot of the heavier weapons offers a bigger visual satisfaction and the Kalash was a familiar reliable as well as the Electro being a fun trigger to pull. And again, they all feel more than okay and the visual feedback is ramped up a notch when you start applying elemental cartridges to your weapons. The energy weapons are charged from your successful melee attack, so it's encouraged to chop and change the weapon of choice within most encounters. An even bigger encouragement was the use and combination of weapons with Charles, the technological glove that P3 spends most of his time just arguing with, even though he's clearly doing most of the heavy lifting in the combat. Charles can be upgraded at Nora too as you progress through the game, unlocking new abilities like telekinesis, electric shock, frostbite, or some zorb-like bubble shield just to name a few. Combining these abilities with your weapons is where Atomic Heart's combat model hits the heights that I was after. Utilizing certain combinations works better on certain enemies, allowing the combat to feel varied between each encounter, balancing when to attack and when to defend nicely, and making some good use of well-timed dodges. Charles is used outside of combat too, entering an x-ray mode highlighting the interactables and enemies in the process. Those that have watched a few of my videos before will know I am not a fan of this, in particular in games that emphasize looting. It removes that rewarding feeling of finding something using my own two eyeballs, and it's even more frustrating when there's evident care being taken towards the enemy placements in the linear areas and being able to see them all in the next room before entering that room craps all over the fear factor. Charles can also be used in a few fun varying mini puzzles as well, some of which are essential and others that aren't, offering a little breather from the core gameplay loop of kill, loot, upgrade, repeat. Another gameplay system was the traversing and platforming, and even though they weren't that frequent, they were still frequent enough for me to notice the mechanics do feel a little janky. There's certainly no intention for the player to be free running around the level design, but when asked to traverse or platform, it's pretty cumbersome. The open world of Atomic Heart is a stunning environment to venture through, but there was almost an excessive amount of enemies to wade through when getting from A to B is all you really wanted to do, and as a result, the exploration incentive to diminishes after the 16th wave of robots have started to attack. I think an update could alleviate this so we could be afforded a little more space between each encounter, but make no mistake, both the linear and open areas of Atomic Heart are littered with such stunning and atmospheric detail. I also think the soundtrack deserves a mention too, the ever-talented Mick Gordon reliably blowing a hole in my eardrums and accompanied by some contrapuntal, classical and opera tracks in tune with the 1950s, really enjoy stuff. Performance wise there's no ray tracing options as of yet and playing on PC with a 3090 and an i9 and 32 gigs of RAM I was playing with DLSS set to quality and sitting at a solid 60 FPS for the most part but it was more in the fast paced cutscenes that were dominated by visual effects where I'd see the odd stutter. Overall though a very smooth and well optimized experience. Ultimately Atomic Heart ticks a lot of boxes for first person shooter action RPG fans and while it doesn't exactly excel in any of those boxes that have been ticked, it certainly doesn't fail or fall below the expected standard in any of them either. It's a very well-rounded game and one I've thoroughly enjoyed playing and genuinely believe it deserves more than to be compared to previous games of similar genres, and let's not forget this is the developer's Munfish's first game. Hats off to them! 
Game Pass subscribers, Atomic Heart, absolutely worth your time. PS5 owners, a little harder to recommend at full price in truth, but depending on your bank balance, I mean, I could say that about literally any other game with the prices these days. It's ridiculous. Even so, I'd still say Atomic Heart is worth the investment on whatever platform you're playing on. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.